Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time, Harold Terry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levin. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let's consider that great American dish, macaroni and cheese. Do your folks like it with the macaroni fluffy, light, and the cheese goodness all through and through? Well, I can tell you how to make it just that way. Cook it in only seven minutes. Get a thrifty box of the product called Kraft Dinner. In the package, you'll find a special quick-cooking macaroni. Also, there's an envelope of Kraft grated that puts cheese goodness on every tender morsel. All in all, you do just seven minutes cooking and get a swell, thrifty main dish. Now, particularly when you're watching the food bills, now when you're especially busy, Kraft Dinner is a big help. You'd better get several packages of Kraft Dinner and be ready to make delicious macaroni and cheese whenever you're in a hurry. And once again, let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve, who's not a happy man today. No, indeed, this is one of his bad days. Right now, he's telling his niece and nephew, Marjorie and Leroy... And Bertie, their cook, all about it. Yes, and there I was, peacefully driving along, when suddenly I heard a bang, and then a bumpity bumpity bump. At first, I hoped it was just the rear end falling out, but no such luck. It was a tire. Well, gee, Uncle Mort, what about the spare? Leroy, that was the spare. And can't you get a new tube anywhere? No, my dear, they, they can't sell me one. But I thought when you went to buy a new tube, you could have it just as long as you brought your old one in. <laughs> Bertie, that's for toothpaste, not rubber. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I got my gums mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Leroy, I'll tend to the door. Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. Hey, Judge Hooker, what does that sawed-off Solomon want? Hello, Gildy. Hello, kid. Hello. Hello. Say, Gildersleeve, I saw you down on Center Street this afternoon with that flat tire, and she certainly looked bad. How dare you talk about Rosita Callahan? Oh! <laughs> you mean the flat tire on my car, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like I'll have to learn to drive on three wheels, Judge. Oh, no, you won't. Here, take this. Gee, Unc, what's in the package? Huh? Well, it, it feels like... Oh, I'm afraid to hope. By George, it's a girdle. Oh, no, it's an inner tube. Oh, Judgey Wudgey. Hey, keep him off me. Stop trying to kiss me, Gildy. Oh, I'm so happy I could dance. But he's a jolly good fellow. He's good and he's ripe and he's mellow. He's kind underneath his big bellow. And his heart is as big as his head. <laughs> Wahoo! Now, now, Strockmorton, control uh, yourself. Uh-huh. Yes, Uncle. Quit wearing that inner tube around your neck. Uh, oh, let him. It matches the one around his middle. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're a card judge. Say, how can I repay you? Hey, won't you stay for dinner? No, thanks. Hey, can, can I lend you any money, pal? If, how about taking a pound of sugar? No, Gildersleeve. I've been amply repaid just watching the way your big, fat, stupid face lights up. Uh, what a sense of humor. <laughs> Hooker, you kill me. Hey, Unc, before you do anything rash, don't you think you should see if it'll fit your car first? Uh, Leroy, that isn't polite. Remember you must never look a gift tube in the size. <laughs> By the way, Judge, it is the right size, isn't it? Of course it is, you big blimp. Yeah, big blimp. <laughs> well, so long, folks. I've got to get back home now. Yeah. Good night. Bye-bye, Bye. guys. Leroy, there goes one of nature's noblemen. That isn't what you said about him yesterday, Uncle. It, what did I say? You said he was so stingy, he has his bubble gum retreaded. <laughs> Leroy, never repeat malicious gossip. Today we saw a new Judge Hooker. A kind, generous, thoughtful hooker. Yes. Yes. I got to find some way to reciprocate for this beautiful tube. Well, he's running for re-election. Yeah, that's right. And next month he's going to observe his 20th anniversary as a judge. Say, that'd make good publicity for his campaign. If we could celebrate by giving him a... Now, let me see. We could give him a... Dinner? Yes, we could give him a dinner. No! Uh, wait, why not? 
That's what we'll do. We'll organize a testimonial dinner and keep it a surprise from him. Yeah, and get him a present, too. You're a bright boy, my boy. Now, what kind of a present should we get Judge Hooker as a reward for sitting on the Superior Court bench for 20 years? I know it's Mr. Gilsley. What, Bertie? A big, soft, fluffy pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Corbett, uh, Gildersleeve speaking. Uh, we're holding a testimonial dinner for Judge Hooker, and I'm calling to see how many tickets you want. Now, now, Mr. Corbett, he always spoke well of you. Uh, don't you feel you owe the judge something? Uh, how? Why, during the last election campaign, didn't he kiss your baby? And right after that, didn't he come down with the mumps? <laughs> What's that? Oh, your baby got the mumps from him. Oh, excuse me. Goodbye. Say, maybe you shouldn't have brought that up, Uncle Mort. Mr. Corbett controls a lot of votes. Oh, Hooker's going to win in a walk, my dear, and a good thing, too. The little stiff is getting a little yeah. stiffer. Hey, Uncle, look, I printed all the tickets on my printing press. Oh, fine, my boy, thank you. Uh, you owe me two dollars for paper. All right, here's one of the tickets. They're worth two dollars, go out and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeepers, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. I'm getting you Mrs. Twitchell, Uncle. Oh, uh, thanks, Marjorie. <laughs> There she is. Uh, hello, Mrs. Twitchell. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm on the Judge Hooker Testimonial Dinner Committee. You know the judge, don't you? Now, Mrs. Twitchell, he always spoke well of you. Oh, hello, Judge Hooker. Mr. Gildersleeve's in the study. How many tickets do you want, Mrs. Twitchell? Uncle Mort, here comes the judge. Uh, oh, my goodness. Hide the tickets. Uh, quickly now. Yeah. Don't let that old baboon see him. Huh? No, no, not you, Mrs. Twitchell. He had a baboon. <laughs> hello, Gildersleeve. Who's a baboon? Uh, me. Uh, see you later, Mrs. Twitchell. Goodbye. A charming woman, that Mrs. Twitchell, isn't she? Only with snakes. <laughs> she and her husband are still sore at me because of something that happened in my court years ago. What was that, Judge Hooker? I married them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are these tickets doing on the floor? Tickets? Oh, never mind, Hooker. I'll pick them up. <laughs> Quit hitting me with that thick skull of yours, Gildy. Did, did you get them all right, Uncle? Uh, Yes, I think so. What's so important about those tickets, Gildersleeve? What are you hiding them for? Uh, who, me? Hiding? Uh, 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 what pockets are you thinking about? The what? The ones you're stuffing in your pocket. Nothing against the law, are they? Oh, no, Judge. Quite the contrary. Yeah, that's right. They're for one of the most contrary... Uncle. Excuse him, Judge Hooker. He's just organized a benefit for a very deserving man. Yeah, so there. Oh, poor fella. Anyone I know, Gildy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to buy a couple of tickets. Let's see them. Oh, I don't think they want you to buy any tickets for this, Judge. Oh, I see. I'm not good enough to go, huh? Uh, you just want to invite your Richie friends, is that it? Uh, All right. I know where I'm not wanted. All some people want out of you are your inner tubes. After they got them, they toss you aside like a worn-out casing. <laughs> Uncle, your face is getting terribly red. Say something before your eyes pop out. Oh! oh. Gee, Uncle, what did the editor say, huh? Uh, the editor assigned one of the reporters to show us their files on Judge Hooker. Are you going to tell them you want the dope for your speech at the banquet? Oh, no, Lee. We don't want any publicity until it's all over. Shh, here he comes. Mr. Gildersleeve. My name is Duffy. Oh, hello, Mr. Duffy. I brought you our hooker file. Oh, a whole envelope full of clippings. I suppose we spread them out right here, huh? Okay. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Look, Unc, here's a picture of the judge when he was first sworn into office. Gee, I never knew he had hair. Yep, of course, my boy. <laughs> you think he was born bald? Well, wasn't he? <laughs> Quit changing the subject. Look at this. The judge foils jailbreak by conking crook with gavel. Prisoner loses hearing. <laughs> and listen to this one. Taxi company defaults drunk driving suit as Hickey Hacky plays hooky from hooker. Uh, uh, oh, look at here. Here's a picture of him in army uniform. Corporal Hooker returns from guarding Niagara Falls as Spanish-American war ends. <laughs> Say, excuse me, but why all the interest in the judge? Well, uh, you see, Mr. Duffy, he's coming up for re-election, and I've got a little surprise for him, that's all. <laughs> uh, thanks for showing me these. Come on, Leroy. If we're going to make the judge's office, we'll have to run. Hmm. Run for office, huh? Hey, Toots, give me Mr. Cornell. Uh, boss, this is Duffy. Uh, you know that guy Gildersleeve? 
Well, after he dug around into Judge Hooker's past, I heard him say he's going to run for the judge's office. Now, look, we're out after Hooker, so what do you say we endorse Gildersleeve? Ah, <laughs> good. I've been gunning for that Hooker ever since he hit my brother over the head with his gavel. <laughs> Just one ticket? Now, see here. You're a lawyer, aren't you, Mr. Marks? And you practice in Judge Hooker's court, don't you? And you want to keep on winning cases, don't you? Huh? Well, how many tickets did you say? Six? Oh, well, that's better. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Goodbye. Good afternoon, Uncle Mort. How's the ticket sale going? Oh, splendidly, my dear. Although I'm afraid the speaker's table is going to be terribly unbalanced. Everybody is so eager to be on Judge Hooker's right side. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mr. Gilsey, but the gentleman here to see you, only he ain't. Uh, ain't? What do you mean, Bertie? He ain't no gentleman. He looks tougher than 20 cents worth of gold meat. Oh, Bertie. <laughs> Bertie, that's just your imagination. Show him in. Yeah. Okay, but when I point to the door, I'm going to have a meat cleaver in my hand. I wonder who it can be. Oh, probably some friend of Judge Hooker's. Mr. Bear Bell, what? Well, well, well. Hello, Mr. Gillisleeve. Say, some joints you got here. Uh, yes, isn't it? Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Beer Bucket? Uh, Bach is the name. Oh, yeah. Only my friends call me Beer Barrel for oblivious reasons. Oblivious. Uh, some of us boys was hearing about the speed you're throwing for old persimmon puss. Persimmon puss? The judge, the judge. Yeah. And uh, we wanted to be excluded, too. Yeah, we want to pay tribute to the old geezer. Oh, well, that's a very nice spirit, Mr. Barrel House. I'm sure the judge will appreciate it. I hope so. I've been trying to get to the judge for some time now. Say, if uh, we buy a hundred tickets, do you think that'd take care of the beef? Take care of the beef? That'd take care of the whole meal. <laughs> that'll cost you two hundred dollars. Two C's? Well, that's a mere bag of telly. Oh, bag of telly. Here are your tickets, Mr. Pilsner. And here's the dough. Well, so long. It's sure going to be a load off of me associates' minds now that we're palsy wowsy with old pickle pan. Pickle pan? Oh, yes, he means cucumber kisser. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. Have you heard about my poem for the banquet, Marjorie? No, Uncle Mort. Well, it's called Poem on the Occasion of the Celebration of Judge Horace Hooker's 20th Anniversary of His Election to the State Superior Court Bench. Oh, that's just wonderful, Uncle. It, wait a minute. That was just the title. How does the poem go? Uh, I don't know. I haven't written it yet. <laughs> Where is it? Lead me to him. Oh, there you are. Gildersleeve, what is the meaning of this? Oh, hello, Judge. What's the meaning of what? This story in the political column of the Times. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve to run against Judge Hooker. Dark horse enters race. Yep, who's a horse? It's a plot, a frame-up to ruin me. Gildersleeve, you're going to pay for this. Yes, but Judge, uh, I just went there to look. Put down that floor lamp, Hooker. I'll put it down on your head, you overstuffed double-crosser. Uh, wait a minute, uh, that paper lied. It, how can I run for a judge? I'm not even a lawyer. Say, that's right. Yes. I should have thought of that myself. But I'm all a bundle of nerves today. Huh? Got a mighty tricky trial on my hands, and I've got a right to be jittery. Is that so? What case is that, Judge? It's a gang of cutthroat racketeers. A whole slew of them. It's Beer Barrel Buck and his mob. <laughs> oh, my. Here we go again. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, let me tell you how to perform a little kitchen magic. How to make delicious macaroni and cheese in only seven minutes cooking time. You do it with a product called Kraft Dinner. In every box of Kraft Dinner, there's a special macaroni. You plunge it into boiling water, cook it not more than seven minutes by the clock, and it's finished. Fluffy, tender as any macaroni you ever baked in your life. You drain the cooked macaroni, whisk in a little milk and butter... And then, sprinkle cheese goodness through and through with the Kraft grater that also comes in every Kraft dinner box. Isn't that easy? And wait till the folks taste this fluffy macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. Kraft dinner served as a main dish is downright thrifty. At your grocer's tomorrow, see that for yourself. And get several packages of Kraft dinner so you can stock the pantry shelf. <laughs> And now back to the great Gildersleeve, who's still determined to surprise Judge Hooker with a big testimonial dinner, even if it kills him, him being the judge. 
Oh, hello, Bertie. Good afternoon, Mr. Gilsleeve. I've just come from the Summerfield Biltmore. <laughs> the chef and I arranged the menu for the banquet. Listen to this. At first, crab a la Judge Hooker. What's that? Oh, you know what a big crab the judge is. Well, these are even bigger. <laughs> Next, parole of mock turtle soup. Well, what does that parole mean? Fresh out of the can. <laughs> After that, Bertie, comes the fowl. The fowl what? It, Bertie, stop interrupting. We're having turkey a la Gildersleeve. Now, what can that be? Yeah, I'm not sure myself. The chef said something about it being stuffed with chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> After that, uh, roast beef, baked potatoes, cream corn, and chocolate whipped cream pie. Mm, it all sounds mighty rich. Judge Hooker usually sups on milk toast and a cup of hot water, diluted. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie, the only reason we're giving this dinner is so the judge can get a good square meal. Hello, Uncle Mort. Say, did you order a lot of flowers for the speaker's table at the banquet? Oh, well, yes, but why not? Well, doesn't Judge Hooker suffer from rose fever? It rose fever? Now, Marjorie, a few American beauties aren't going to hurt his Yankee noodle. <laughs> Uncle Mort, you look worried. Yes, why not? All the details of that dinner on my shoulders, arranging for speakers, trying to find a suitable present for the guest of honor, worrying about that gangster and his mob showing up. You mean that fellow who came in and bought a hundred tickets? Yes. If Beer Barrel and his gang come, the decent people will think they're pals of hookers, and the judge will be washed up like seaweed. Oh, well, why don't you give them their money back? Oh, Marjorie, I refuse to have any dealings with crooks. Besides, I've already spent the money for a string ensemble. String ensemble? Yeah. You mean a lynching party? Oh, Marjorie. <laughs> well, the only thing to do is sell another hundred tickets and get the money back that way. Yeah, I thought of that. Only we've already sold almost 800 of them, and I just found out the banquet room only seats 250. <laughs> My goodness, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, we can either feed them in relays or else I can arrange a lap supper in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> you spluttering spigots, that's beer barrel now. It, Bertie, don't let him in. Tell him I've gone away. Where to? The Shangri-La. <laughs> Uncle, you'll never squeeze under that sofa. Hey, let me in. Who wants the door? I'm coming, Leroy. Oh, get up, Uncle Mort. It's just Leroy. You don't have to hide. If who? If Leroy? If uh, who's hiding? I was just playing air raid shelter. <laughs> hey, Uncle, you don't have to worry about that big gangster anymore. Uh, how do you know? It says so right here in the paper. Look. Uh, let me see. Uh, Judge Hooker sentences hoodlum mob to 20 years apiece. Beer barrel bot dragged from courtroom, shrieking, I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, old fella. No refunds. <laughs> Take a recess for five minutes. That's what we've been waiting for, Leroy. Now, you you know what you're to do, don't you? Yeah, sure, Unc. We're going to up to talk to Judge Hooker, and when he isn't looking, I'm going to swipe his gravel. Yes, not gravel, my boy, gavel. Okay, I'll swipe his gavel, then. Yes, then. Not swipe, either. We simply want to borrow his gavel, so we can measure it and have an exact duplicate made in ivory and gold as an anniversary present. Well, why does it have to be so exact? Well, the judge is as temperamental about his gavel as a golf pro is about his clubs. You mean the judge uses this for a putter? Yes. No, my boy. He's just finicky about the size and weight. He never leaves it around. He probably takes it home nights to crack nuts. <laughs> oh, hello, Judge Hooker. Oh, yes. Hello, Judge Hooker. Hello, Leroy. Hello, Gildersleeve. What do you want? Oh, I just dropped in for a visit. How's your election campaign coming along, Judge? Badly. Very badly. I can't understand it at all. Three weeks ago, I was as good as re-elected. Today, I have a tough fight on my hands. Huh? Gildersleeve, I believe there's a conspiracy against me. No, who'd ever do such a dirty trick? Well, there's some sinister figure trying to cut my throat behind my back. Uh, you mean uh, something underhanded is hanging over your head? I don't know what I mean. Half the crooks in town come up to me now and slap me on the shoulder and say, I'll be seeing you, judgey. People keep winking and whistling at me. I'm being persecuted, I tell you. Oh, no. Maybe it's just some friends uh, planning a surprise, Judge. Friends? You mean fiends. Why, if I ever... Excuse me, Judge. Time to resume court. Thank you, Silsby. I'll be right there. Look, Gildersleeve. Huh? Keep your eyes and ears open. If you see or hear anything suspicious, please let me know. Oh, sure, Judge. Just leave everything to me. Hunk. It's coming, Leroy. 
Did you get it? Sure, and I drew an outline of it on paper, like you told me. Oh, fine. Let's slip the gavel back into place now, huh? Court will come to order, please. Just a second, Silsby. Where's my gavel? Oh, where's the judge's gavel? It was right there, Your Honor. Isn't here now. Someone must have stolen it during recess. Leroy, isn't it getting a little stuffy in this courtroom? Why, uh, yes, Uncle Throckmorton. Shall we get some fresh air? Well, is this a practical joke or a real theft? All right, bailiff. Lock the doors. We'll search everyone in the courtroom till we find the culprit. <laughs> Leroy, get rid of that gavel. Don't worry, Unc, I did. It's splendid, my boy. Where'd you hide it? In your pocket, Unc. <laughs> Leroy, never do that again. The judge won't like me if he finds this. we got to get out of here. Oh, Judge Hooker, can I whisper something to you? What is it, Gildy? Uh, judge, I've got an important engagement with the governor. You wouldn't want to keep him waiting, would you? No, go ahead, go ahead. I've got enough trouble without you, you big buffalo. <laughs> Eat it. Oh, thanks, Judge. Come on, Leroy. Silsby, let Mr. Gildersleeve leave. It's okay. All right, Judge. <sighs> Gee, Unc, that was fast thinking. What are you going to do with the gavel now? It's the gavel? Oh, I haven't got it anymore, Leroy. While we were talking, I stuck it into Judge Hooker's pocket. <laughs> I'm an extremely busy man, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Well, Governor, I hate to ask any favors. But after all, I voted for you the last three times you were elected. Thanks. However, this is my first term in office. Yes, it is? Oh. <laughs> Must have been two other governors. Please get to the point of your visit, Mr. Gildersleeve, if your visit has any point. Oh, it has, definitely. I, uh, I just want to invite you to be the principal speaker at a dinner we're giving for Judge Horace Hooker. Hooker? Why, that little... Uh, 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 governor, he's always spoken well of you. No, he has, has he? Oh, absolutely. Except maybe when you pardon some crook he's just sent up the river... Or pass some law that he has to declare unconstitutional. Or to get involved in some shady deal with the forestry department. And what does he say then? Oh, he still sticks by it. He says our state has the best governor that money can buy. <laughs> See here, Gildersleeve, I didn't come to Summerfield to be insulted. Yes, I know it. Judge Hooker said you came here to make a couple of sharp horse trades so you can stay in office. Well... After that, I'm certainly not going to make a speech in favor of any political nincompoop. But I'm not asking you to talk about yourself, Governor. <laughs> I wasn't talking about myself, Gildersleeve. I was referring to that miserable little travesty on justice. That anemic habeas corpuscle. That blithering judicial blunder named Judge Hooker. Did you get that? Uh, no, Governor. Would you mind repeating it again? There's a couple of dandies I'd like to remember. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Gill, please. My, but you look tough selecting me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bertie. Thank you. It's Leroy. Yes, Uncle. Stop shining your shoes on your stockings. <laughs> Harry Miser, we were going to be late. Oh, coming, Uncle Mort. Is Judge Hooker here yet? No, but I'm expecting him at any moment. Has he found out about the surprise yet, Uncle? Uh, no, Leroy. Uh, it's been a terrible strain keeping it from him all these weeks. He thinks the four of us are going to the Summerfield Biltmore for a nice, quiet dinner. I can hardly wait to see his dyspeptic dial light up when he walks into the banquet room and sees all those people. <laughs> yep, that must be him now. I recognize the ring. I'll answer, Bertie. Well, well, come in, come in, come in, Judge. Hiller, Steve, on the way down here, I was stopped by a motorcycle officer. Oh, my goodness, that's too bad, Judge. Yeah, police department's in a perfectly rotten state. I agree with you. Imagine that cop. He offered me my choice. Either a $5 ticket for speeding... Or else I could buy a ticket for some political shindig for two dollars. Uh, a, a political shindig? Oh, well, I, I hope you took your medicine like a good citizen. I did. I gave him the two bucks. No. Didn't even look at the darn thing in the dark. I wonder what racket it is. Oh, well, there's uh, no time to waste, Judge. Uh, let's get going. Uh, Marjorie! Hurry up, Marjorie! Plenty of time, Gildy. Now, where did I put that ticket? Uh, Marjorie! Hurry up! I found it. Watch this. If Marjorie, never mind hurrying up. Testimonial dinner honoring 20th anniversary of Judge Horace Hooker. Entertainment music speakers. Uncle Mort Gildersleeve, chairman. Uh, Uncle Mort. Leroy, why did you do that? Gildersleeve, why did you do this? Oh, now the surprise is all spoiled. But I hate testimonial dinners. It's now, he tells me. Why couldn't you have mentioned it three weeks ago when you gave me that tube? You could have saved me all the time and trouble I put in. But no, you have to surprise me at the last moment. 
You've been working on this campaign clam bake that long? What do you mean, clam bake? This is the season's swankiest civic soiree. There's nut cups and everything. <laughs> but what's the idea of having cops flag people down and then hold them up? Hey, do I get my two bucks back? If all in good time, Hooker. Let's wait and see if we have a deficit first. Well, I'm all ready. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? Oh, yeah, that's right. What are we waiting for? Let's hurry up. I wish I'd known about this before. I'd have gotten a haircut. Come on, you haven't needed a haircut since you came back from Niagara Falls, Corporal. Hurry, everybody. Now, hurry. Mm. Mustn't keep the crowd waiting. All right. Yeah. Judge, when all those hundreds of people stand up and start cheering... Now, you've got to pretend that this is all a big surprise. Do you understand? Don't worry. I'll know what to do. Say, I think I'm going to like this. Yeah? Well, you better like it after all the trouble. Oh, oh great jumping jeeps. What was that? As if I didn't know. Well, what, was... <laughs> what was it, Gildy? Remember the tube that brought on this little celebration? Yes. Well, it just had a blowout all of its own. <laughs> Remember, ladies and gentlemen, life is just a football game, so let's keep Judge Hooker on the bench. <laughs> we should also honor him for his military services to his country, a brave soldier in time of war, an officer beloved by all who served under him, and a gentleman who flinched not at his post. And it is with this thought in mind that I ask your indulgence while I read a little poem <coughs> of my own composition. Especially written for this occasion as a tribute to that prince of good fellows, George Horace Hooker. <clears throat> H is for honesty, you can see it in his mug. O is for offenders, who he puts right in the jug. O is also for the office he's held for 20 years. K is for the knowledge hidden between his ears. E is for the energy that always has been his. R is for re-election, let's keep him where he is. Put them all together, they spell hooker, a name that fits him like a glove. <laughs> uh, yeah. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, if any of you have been lavish in your praise of Judge Horace Hooker, it's only right. Or remember, he always spoke well of you. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you, Leroy. <laughs> Too bad you printed the wrong date on the tickets, Leroy. Otherwise, we surely would have had a bigger crowd. <laughs> and now, Judge Hooker, won't you say a few words? Yes, quick. Get me some bicarbonate of soda. This dinner's killing me. This is going to be one of my bad days. <laughs> Marjorie? Oh, he'll be up and around in a day or so. How are you feeling, Uncle Mort? Is that lump on your head any better? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Last thing I remembered was presenting Judge Hooker with that gold and ivory gavel. What caused the blackout? Gee, Uncle, he presented it right back to you. He did? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Original music heard in this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. We all want to eat the right foods these days, the nourishing foods that help give us energy and health. So it's good news that the right foods need not be expensive and that they can be mighty appetizing, too. Now, a good example is wholesome, nourishing parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread made by Kraft. You see, parquet is the margarine that tastes so wonderfully good. And it's an economical source of important food elements, too. Energy. Parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve. Vitamin A. Winter and summer, there are 9,000 units in every pound. So you see, parquet margarine is as nutritious as it is delicious and economical. Now, if it isn't there already, put parquet margarine on tomorrow's shopping list. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.